what is going on welcome to my take on an outward beginner guide there's a lot of beginner guides out there for this game but there's a lot of when i've when i've seen them there's a lot of questions that i had about this game that i feel that they did not cover so my first tip on this game is make a burner character there's a huge learning curve to this game so you can start it try it play it a little bit see how you like it learn a little bit and then delete that character start over new and just run on from there all right so let's get started new game one to two players that's really just a split screen or not it doesn't matter you can do you can start off on one player and then go to split screen later hardcore you got normal and hardcore normal is regular game hardcore is basically i'll, I'll click on it so basically in hardcore mode when you are defeated there's a chance that your character dies permanently and it is respective and its respective save file will be deleted so that means basically you have a chance when you die that it's permanent and you will never be able to play that character again uh you'll just have to make a new character when i looked it up i think if i remember right it's only a 20 percent chance of that happening so I mean, it could happen on the first chance, but it also could happen. You could die 10 times and it never kicks you, but that's the chance you're taking. I would not recommend that on your first playthrough. This is where you start. This is just a town, uh, not a town, but uh, a, uh, a shoreline. Basically, your boat wrecked. Um, pick up everything. Now I'm on keyboard and mouse, so my pickup is E. Uh, sprint is shift. Holding shift. There is an auto run and that's the equal button but that's as fast as you run so to sprint you have to hold shift at the same time now the first kind of spoiler i would say that i'm saying in this game is not a big one so don't click out of the video it's you're gonna know it right when you start anyway um basically you owe 150 silver to your town as a uh a blood price or something they call that but you basically you you got to pay that you're going to lose your home um you have five days to pay it a lot of people think that it's really hard to make that money you can actually make that money without even leaving town in the beginning so basically you start off by picking up everything So pick up everything you got all the clothes get some seaweed here seaweed used to make uh um you can make teas in this game you got water right here is if you notice down at the bottom it says clean water always and only drink clean water if it says anything else salt water rancid water anything like that um don't drink it you had to boil it first and you get sick from it you seen over there uh, over there i picked up this um this is actually a fishing spear fishing harpoon but i'm going to use it as a weapon to start off we're going to come over here there are some right here you got a machete down here you got a pickaxe Mining pick. Now, a little quick tip for beginning fighting. Tab on them, you lock on them. On the keyboard and mouse, it's hitting tab. And then strafe, just hold one side. As you see, let me get a little bit closer so he attacks. Come on, attack. As you strafe, he basically won't hit you um so that's that's an easy little tip for beginning fighting right there just strafe at the top of them there's a health bar and at, at, under the health bar there is a stamina bar uh a, a impact bar basically the impact bar if the impact bar wears down all the way he is going to get knocked down but i'm probably i won't be able to wear out that impact bar 
Oh, I got hit, but I was a little bit close, too close to him, but yeah, you just strafe like this. Wait. See, he missed again. All right, now picking up. You just, I just take everything for now. Remember, we're trying to, we've got to play off that blood debt. I'm going to explain, explain this a little bit later, but being overweight, you've seen I had this equipped first, made me overweight. But at the bottom right of this screen, this one, the tattered attire says it weighs three and the trader garb weighs four. So I switched them out. Now I got, I don't weigh, I don't, I'm not heavy anymore. This part is very small. You can't go over there. You can't go any further over there. This is just the little island that got shipwrecked on. But there is some stuff to get that you can sell in town. That, that, that. We don't need wood. Wood, do not pick up wood. You can get wood all over the place. Never hold wood in your inventory. All right. And now as soon as you come over here. Grab that. Talk to this guy. You can talk to him later. See what he says. Take some bread in there. And then go to, to the uh, bedroll. Hit, hit F. Don't have to hold it. Sleep on it. You can just sleep for one hour. All right. Now that you've woken up in bed, I'm going to explain a, a couple little things to you. Hit, hit, for a keyboard and mouse, hit an I brings up your inventory. The first part of your inventory, this is your currently equipped items. That basically won't impact your baggage, how heavy your bag is, like pocket right here. Actually, let me run downstairs and grab this real quick. So I have a backpack on. All right, now you can see more. Currently equipped stuff does not imp impact your 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 bag, but it does impact your your stamina, how fast you can run, how far you can run, stuff like that. So the lighter you are, the faster you you will move, the faster you will roll, the further you can run, stuff like that. Um, pockets, your pocket is well, your pocket. Um, so you have a 12 out of 18 weight and then your satchel which i just have a satchel on right now and you can see the satchel is currently equipped items so you see a satchel up there and it's the right capacity is 25 so that means i have a weight of 25 on that on this particular backpack satchel backpack i have a tattered attire in here so three out of 25 and now you can move a lot of stuff to save weight in your pocket you can move it to your bag. I like to keep just about everything in my bag. When you're fighting, so see my roll? You roll very slow, right? And it say, say my weapon's out and I'm fighting. Rolling is very slow. You, with most backpacks, you wanna hit, from a keyboard and mouse, hit B and you will drop your backpack and now you're gonna move a lot faster. Rolling, much faster. Do so you wanna do that when you're fighting? Um, so that's why you keep as much as you can in your backpack. Now, what you want to keep in your pocket is stuff like bandages later on when you get them potions, um, uh, maybe one water thing of water. Uh, that way you can, you'll have that on you while you're fighting and you won't have to try to run to your, your satchel if you need. Also with your bag, you see I'm 18.2 of 25. Once I get to 25... 25 out of 25 is good, but once I get to 25.1 and higher, it's going to be red. And at the bottom left here, it's actually going to show that you're overweight. You'll see a little, uh, a little icon for being overweight. And then you can come into this screen, uh, this screen here with effects and it'll say overweight and it'll show basically you slow down. The further overweight you are, the slower you'll move. And it'll even get to the point where you won't be able to move at all. Um, so you really got to watch that and then distribute stuff back and forth from your satchel to your pocket. Um, make sure you have stuff in your pocket for healing, stuff like that. Um, also silver, this is your money right here. You can, you can sell that to traders for gold for every 100 silver. You sell them, you buy one bar of gold. So one bar of gold equals 100 silver. The gold weighs less than half the weight of silver. So whenever possible, always, oh, oh, as soon as I get 100 silver, I'm going to buy a piece of gold. 
and then you can set whenever you need the silver you just sell it to a trader so sell the one gold bar to a trader and you get 100 silver you never lose money or anything you don't you don't lose money from doing that you just it just saves a lot of weight like i can carry 10 bars of gold on me which is going to be 1000 silver but if you keep 1000 silver in your in your backpack you'll probably end up being overweight so remember that's a, that's one good, really good tip to to keep in mind all right next under when you hit i for keyboard and mouse or your inventory go to your inventory and then click on the next tab at the top which is going to be equipment equipment i mean i don't really use this screen much i just come in here to see what my maybe a, my attack is my defense is my miscellaneous is um but you can see the stuff over here oh really quick tip arrows equip your arrows if you are using a bow and arrow if you're not using a bow and arrow i really wouldn't recommend picking up arrows but if you are using a bow and arrow equip them you can equip up to 15 at a time so that way it's taking away the weight from your bag and you can keep them on your person okay back under the equipment tab under attack you have your physical damage your impact damage and then your weapon speed now right there you got the damp on, on this weapon the machete you can see to the right i got 12 damage 12 impact and 1.2 speed now remember this the higher the number on your weapon speed the faster it is however just because every every type of weapon has its own speeds um just because one speed might be 1.2 for the machete the uh two-handed axe that might be 1.2 which there are none but that i've seen but if it if it was 1.2 it would still attack slower so just because it's it matches the same speed every type of weapon has its own kind of speed you see what i'm saying so all the swords would that would be one point all the one-handed swords that would be 1.2 will be about the same but that's not going to be the same for a spear that's 1.2 you still might seem slower or especially maces so keep that in mind if you hit t it'll bring this up physical defense impact so these are all the icons attack speed protection protection is like on armor you got resistances but uh, like heavier armor will have actually protection on it barrier status resistance so barrier is when people when when um enemies are casting something at you fire lightning anything like that your higher your barrier the less damage that it's good that that is going to do to you but you also have resistances to lightning too but barrier is going to be a a general um basically to everything all all the elements status resistance is going to be for slow like if something or bleeding if if something that in uh causes bleeding on you your status resistance will lower that decay decay is um stuff like poison and then uh, poison and corruption frost ethereal ethereal is from the un basically the undead ghosts um lightning fire you got movement speed stamina cost mana cost hot weather defense cold weather defense and corruption resistance so that's going to be under the equipment tab next under vitals you got your basic stats your health stamina mana all the basics your needs is your food drink sleep and corruption so food you always got to have food on you, you got to always have drink on you i always have sleep on you uh, or not sleep on you but you always gotta um sooner or later you get tired but uh so you want to sleep and you'll get well rested stuff like that corruption don't really have to worry about corruption until you go to the Soroborians expansion but corruption is the high when as it goes up i think it you you won't get an effect until about 25 percent maybe 30 percent but then you'll get actually a it makes it so you're 100 more hungry um which isn't actually isn't that bad you you can still it's not like you're gonna have to eat constantly stuff like that um and then you have a negative i think it's 25 percent resistance to lightning um when corruption goes up a little bit higher once it gets to about 40 or 50 those the first bad effects on you will 
stay the same, but then you'll actually get bonuses like your decay damage and your fro I believe it's frost damage and decay damage will do 15% more. So every almost every effect, even sleep, cold, being um hungry, the, they'll they'll have negative effects on you, but a lot of them will actually have a positive effect on you too. So that's great things about this game. Um the temperature is right here you're you're neutral but if you're outside if you go to the desert it's gonna you're gonna get really really hot so you want to wear some have a boon on you a buff on you basically that'll give you uh uh that'll make you colder now and then if you're in a cold area you're gonna want a boon on you for to make you hotter stuff like that um if you get too cold you actually get a, a, a cold a, a sickness cold and you'll that'll do stuff to you you'll have lit negative effects on you and you'll need to cure that so under effects i don't have any right now unfortunately but you'll up at the top you'll have a positive effects and then at the bottom you'll have negative actually let's go get an effect on me right now all right so now you see un under effects this is a positive effect but cold weather defense is plus five stamina cost of actions is minus 20 percent so any actions like running or even fighting is going to cost 20% less stamina to do. Now, if I had a negative effect, like if I was hungry, it would be up here and I would actually say negative effects and that would be up here above the positive. The negatives are always at the top, positives are always at the bottom. All right, so that's the effects tab. Next is we got crafting. Crafting is you have the crafting table that you have here. You're also going to have a baking area that you can't see here. You'll have to go into your baking area. You'll have baking and then you'll also have um, alchemy. You'll have need an alchemy kit for that. But under the crafting stuff for you, you have four areas here and you got some stuff you already know right off the bat. You got spikes, travel rations, uh, club, sh plank shield, ba basics, bandages. Those are really cool. Um, you'll need them for healing. Primitive satchel. Let me go ahead and make a primitive, primitive satchel for you. So you already click it, and all you do is click down here. It's created. You see right up there, right up there, primitive satchel added. Go to your baggage. Primitive satchel. And it has 25%, 25 capacity. Now also under crafting, if you want to break something down to get stuff from it, that you don't need tattered hoods. I don't need tattered hoods. So you go you click it, put it there, and you can break it down for linen cloth. Um, also, tattered attire, don't need that. Break it down for primitive uh, linen cloth. Now I can make bandages. Two linen cloths make one bandage. So you just go there, click there. Now I got ban more bandages. I can break down this, you break down this, you'll get iron scraps. As you get further into the game, you're going to get a lot more recipes for making stuff. So... Don't get discouraged right off the bat. Now you can practice and try to throw stuff together yourself. I don't really recommend it just because chances are you're not gonna make anything and it's gonna, a lot of times it'll waste the ingredients. Like it'll destroy the ingredients. Unless it's like a weapon or something like that, it won't destroy it, but for food and stuff, it'll destroy the ingredients. Let's go down here where there's actually a cooking table I'll pick that up, pick that up, pick, pick this jam up. I'm going to pick this stuff up real quick and I'll show you. So one of the things I just picked up is a cooking recipe. And then I picked up uh, some jam, some bread, um, stuff like that. Now this is your cooking table in your house. So go ahead and click that. The bread I picked up and the Gadberry jam I picked up, you can make Gadberry tartines. So I'm going to go ahead and make that. And with putting those together, gives you three Gadberry Tartines. Now the Gadberry, Gary, Gadberry Tartines, actually, I'm going to show you some more effects right here. Click on it. You'll eat it. At the bottom left, you'll see that the little symbol, the white symbol is actually for uh, cold resistance. And the other symbol with the area up is stamina, uh, gaining back stamina. So let me show you at the bottom left, keep an eye on the stamina bar. The yellow bar is a stamina bar. You can see it's slowly going down, but you will actually, with the up arrow of the effect, it comes back faster. 
I'm gonna go to here. Stamina recovery is two. Recovery point recover point six stamina per second. Also cold weather defense plus fifteen. So those are some more positive effects. Your quick slots is at the bottom right. So you can switch all this stuff around. Um, you can fr I'm going to free that up. I'm also going to assign to a quick slot. You can do items or skills. We'll do skills. Put the kick to the Q button. So eight skills you can put however you want, wherever you want. Line them up wherever. You can even put items. Um, assign a quick slot. Item. Um, save. I had a potion there. I don't have a potion, but do bandages. Bandages. So anytime I can just hit bandage. It takes a little bit to put bandage on. You can't move while it's doing it, but as you get it, as you see at the bottom left of the screen, I got the red plus sign, which means it's giving me life back. Under effects, bandage, recover 0.5 health per second. And that la oh, then you got over here, how long they last. Now under effects, not everything has a time limit on it. Some of it will stay on you till you get rid of it. Um, like corruption, corruption, it will stay there until you get a potion to or something to lower your corruption um stuff like that or even a cold a cold will stay on you until you take a, a tea that'll get rid of cold so keep that in mind not everything has a time limit under skills here's all your skills you got these are the skills that you've learned i've as you can see is brand new character so you got a dagger slash you got fire reload that's for pistols um you got a push kick and then throw lantern throw lanterns um i've never used it but it will make uh, it'll burn stuff uh burn the enemies but you do waste a lantern for every single time you use it so it's up to you to use now you will find lanterns here and there so you could just go ahead and use it real quick um also on the left here you got different tabs now passive skills I don't have any right now, but they will show up here. A passive skill is going to be on this guy right here. I want to train with you. Something like this. Fitness increases your maximum health by 25 and the amount of health you restore while sleeping by 20%. Another passive skill. The passive skills are these golden ones. Um, golden background. So you got three passives on this guy. The other one is steady arm. Increases impact resistance by 10 while you are blocking remember impact resistance is the bottom bar at right here the white one if it depletes all the way you'll get knocked down um so while you're knocked down things can hit you over and over until you get back up roll out of the way and it'll reset and then the other passive skill on this guy is increases your maximum health stamina and mana by 15 points each you can see down here at the bottom left we have no mana yet we'll get onto that later but these passive skills are those are always in effect these other skills are the ones for down here that you'll use like uh like shield charge you could if you're if you're holding it using a shield you could rush forward hit the enemy with the shield and then you can infuse your weapon with either frost or cold and then you can either gong strike or with this guy with this one you shoot uh whatever one you have frost or cold you'll with this you'll shoot it out when they're next to each other like this you can only learn one at a time so if i learned this one i would not be able to learn the fire one and then it would go up here and these would be the next set and if i learn this one i will not be able to learn this one vice versa so you really got to choose which ones you want now down here it doesn't matter you can learn all these so in the middle of all skill trainer this is this guy right here in the beginning of your first town you have come to Amber, i want to train with you he is your first skill trainer now he is called the Spellblade Trainer. You have three resource points to use to any skill trainer. To get above this middle line, every skill trainer is the same. Looks the same anyway, as far as this part. To get above this line, you need to use one resource point. So you'll have to choose this skill in the middle, which uses one resource point, and then you'll be able to go above this line. Uh, anything under the line is free, free to, buy now it costs stuff but you won't have to use a resource point so you can for every single trainer you go to you can buy everything under that middle line right there and to go above them you'll have to use one resource points the resource points you only start with three you never get any more there's with the expansions anything like that you never get any more so you got to choose wisely of what you want you do not have to rush 
into your skills, skill trainer. You got plenty of time to decide what you want and what you want to become. I would strongly recommend go online, look up all the skill trainers. I don't really see that as cheating. You don't look up how to videos or anything like that. Just look up the skill trainers and you'll see what they teach. That way you'll know and you can get you can learn your own build and figure out your own build what you're going to want in the future. So if I was to choose fitness from this guy, it's a passive skill, increases your maximum health by 25 and the amount of health you restore while sleeping by 20%. That would actually show up right here under passive skills tab. And that's where they all line up. So you got your active skills. The active skills, the ones you can use as you're fighting, use while you're playing. Passive is always in effect, always. You don't have to do anything to activate them. They're always active. Cosmetic skills is summoning stuff. I got these, I believe from the expansions. Um, you can get more. I do not know how to get more, but use. I got a hippo. I think this is a cross between a baby hippo and a hog. We'll go with that. They do not do anything. They're purely cosmetic. They just follow you around. That is it. It's just a pet does not attack. You can't have it carry anything for you. Nothing. Just cosmetic. Just for looks. So those are the three skills tabs. Now, once you come over here, this is your journal. This your journal is going to be where all your quests come from. You have your right here. You got major quests, minor quests. Major quests is the one we already had is cast away. You find someone who can help, which this is when you woke up on the island. Uh, find someone who can help. We did that. We rested in the campsite, bedroll, and then we woke up, and then we got this one. You can find enough stuff to sell in this town to pay this 150 that you owe. Now, when you're searching town, um, start off in your in your house, in your chest. So you're always going to start with stuff in your chest. So we can grab that stuff, take it out. There's also going to be some gab berries here. You can sell gab berries. You can sell, um, sometimes you'll get a bug from them. Um, this quarter staff you cannot sell. You can use the quarter staff if you want as a weapon, but it does not sell for anything. Up here, in this house here, there's going to be a chest to get. On your way there, pick up the weapon. It's a great axe. Go into the house. To the, through the left door, up the stairs, and there's a chest here gonna be some stuff to sell grab all that now I'm overweight sometimes when you're as you can see right here this explains shows you I got overweight at the bottom left you see the weight thing so I got two negative effects two positive effects let me show you that real quick negative effects always on the top needs I'm thirsty so your maximum stamina cre decreases three times faster also, your being overweight gradually slows movement speed as the weight increases. So you can see I got a little overweight. I'm running much slower now. I'm going to go sell some of this stuff I got now. Now, when you come to town, talk to everybody. Every single person, you know, most of the time has something to say. Unless they're a guard or something. But all these people, so you're going to talk to them, the shopkeeper. Is there and something I'd like need? to talk option two. Can you are you planning to this? pass Berg anytime soon? I have a ledger that needs to be, to be delivered to a general store. You'll he'll pay you, of course, on delivery. So, yes, I'm going to take Excellent. that. Excellent. Thank you. Sharing information is essential for merchants like us. You'll get your reward once you delivered the ledger. So basically, you just got a quest. Exit out of that. Go back to your journal under minor quests. Ledger to Berg. Talk to the owner of the general store in Berg to, to deliver a business ledger. So that's how you get quests. That's why you talk to everybody. Also, some people you talk to when you do, uh, you can see you an option that says, I want to train with you. And then they, they might give you a skill. Um, they'll say for 50 silver, I'll teach you this. Um, that's always great to take every one of those because you never know. You might say... I want to start with this weapon, but you will find weapons. You're going to be switching weapons constantly throughout the game. So always pick up every skill you can. Um, now I'm going to sell everything. Most of the things I got so far now.
the great axe is a one-handed axe so i you might want to use that i'm gonna sell 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 so i'm at 96 after selling um so i'm just getting started there's still a ton more around here to in town to pick up over here you see i'm thirsty this is where you're going to get your fresh water again like i said earlier do not drink the salt water see here's gather salt water and drink salt water gather it if you're almost out of regular clean water this is see where this is where it says clean water so you can hold the drink and now my my thirsty icon went away and i've got regular now you get the water skin pick up a water skin for every water skin you got you have five drinks out of it basically so, and at any time so you can click on it if you get thirsty it'll give you where you're not thirsty anymore and you see they're depleting and even though i'm at two you can go over to any clean water area click it and now it's full again now if that was empty you could always go over here and fill it and then it'll be full of salt water now fishing is a great way to get stuff so whenever you see fish in the water i know it's dark but you'll see fish here see them swimming around so you'll hit you'll hold it hit fish i got one rainbow trout there's a couple more i'm sorry it's dark but there's and here's some more you see them much easier if you either have your lantern lit or actually i can hold my lantern can i i did not pick up my lantern but i got you see i got some boots fishing uh, pick up this machete here Some more fish Now see this little light glowing over there right above my head That's basically some stuff you can get you'll see that throughout the if you drop an enemy or something Anything to loot a chest that you haven't looted yet. It'll be glowing like that hit here uh, And then you got some stuff to grab there. So I'm gonna go sell this stuff And remember I haven't left town yet I'm at 121, so we're almost there. We're almost to where what we need for to pay off our debt. Flint and steels. You only need one flint and steel throughout the whole game. So never take more. They just take up weight. Over here, there's gonna be on this tree, there's gonna be another weapon. An axe. Sell that. Greetings, friend. So we're at 135. Now over here, there's gonna be some more stuff to pick up. Again, I'm very sorry about the uh, darkness. This should top us off for the money we owe. Greetings, friend. All right, so we need 10 more gold, 10 more, 10 more silver, which there is some more stuff in the back here. We'll go back here, right here. There's a little pitchfork, grab the pitchfork. And then right here you can get uh, grab eyes crab eyes you see what that crab eyes i got one crab eyes but one okra spice beetle the spice beetles you use for making um teas greetings friend sell the spice beetle sell the pitchfork and now did i accidentally sell that so we're at 150 exactly There's always little other things you can do. Like if you go up here, right here, there's three recipes. You can sell those or you can keep them and use them. But if you're lacking for the money, you can sell it. All right, I went ahead and slept real quick. That way I can get it light out again. Now, when you come to turn in your money, the money you owe, if she is not here, she will be straight across that little house on the hill right there we went in earlier and got the chest she will be right outside the house right above my head she will be right outside of that so talk to her Greetings. i want to talk about my How blood you price you have a way i have to 150 silver here on time. and boom there you go Oli, now Oli you will Oli not is to go join the holy mission your house i hear if you lose your house there is a way to pay later I've never done that so it's up to you now if you wanted to use an alchemy kit or to cook food outside of your house you would need a pot 
to do that you would first need to come over to any tree any tree at all tree at all and gather wood for every time you gather wood you will get three pieces of wood then you'll hit i come over here to your crafting table craft a campfire kit after you kept craft a campfire kit you will get the campfire put it on the ground and light and put it on the ground now to light it you must have the flint and steel remember i said you only need one flint and steel you just hit it light it so now look at the bottom left too next to my health you see the that's your weather gauge it was in the middle where i'm neutral now i'm going toward the hotter area so if you if you're starting to be in an area where you're really cold and you don't have any and you're getting further and further just quickly run up to a tree make a campfire and stand next to it for a little while it'll slowly bring you up and then you can take off running again and get further and before you get cold now that you paid off your lighthouse you're ready to venture out oh one little tip see the lighthouse see the light whenever you are out venturing in this first map especially when it's dark you will be able to see that light in a lot of areas if you especially if you get up on a little hill or anything that way you'll know where to go before you venture out for your first time do not leave there's a back door i'll show you where this back door is you come back here and if right through right straight ahead if you go straight ahead under all these buildings you see a little doorway ahead right above my head that's going to be the back area to get out D do not leave that air that way first always leave this front way first when you leave this front way first you'll talk to this guy and whatever kind of weapon you have equipped he will give you a skill based off that weapon so a sword he'll give you a sword skill a one-handed sword will give you a one-handed sword sword skill one two hand two-handed sword vice versa um two-handed axe one-handed axe now i'm going on this character i'm going to use fist weapons to make fist weapons for the basics three linen cloths will make cloth knuckles i'm going to equip them as you can see my knuckles and that's with them unequipped and that's with them equipped you run up to them i have them equipped talk to them need something i'm going outside well you got the essentials at least i'll teach you a Here. skill I'll teach you yes. a skill. There you go. He taught me the enrage boom. Mastering boom. skills is the key. All right. So I feel go to under to my skills. The walls. This is where we're talking my active and passive skills. Under active, where which I can use, it has a cooldown of 500 seconds. Grants the rage boon, which increases your impact of your attacks. So again, this white bar down here, when I hit them, and I have this rage boon on this their white bar would deplete faster so i'll knock them down faster using using this skill burns a lot of your maximum health until ne next time you sleep um certain skills require this boon to be active i'm going to show you real quick now see at the bottom left you got my stamina bar again as you use it it's depleting and it opens up to the black area basically and now when you stop it goes up now, if you look, there's a tiny little area that's darker yellow that is not full, like my health bar. It used to be full. That's called burnt stamina. You don't get it back. And let me show you right here. Under stamina, I have a max of 100, but since I currently have right there, there's a little bit of yellow that's um, burnt. So I'm only at 97 to use. There's ways to get that back. And now that's also with this Rage Boon. I'm going to go ahead and use the Rage Boon. It's going to activate it. But as you can see, my health went down a little bit. So now I have burnt health. Now my maximum health is only 96 currently. Uh, so if I take 96 damage, even though my max health is supposed to be 100, if I take 96 damage right now, I will die. So there are ways to get that burnt stuff back. Sleeping, you'll get it back. Potions, you'll get it back. Um, tease you'll get it back there's many different ways to get that burnt stamina back um if you use let me see if i'll come on for training purposes let me get it on got one okra spice beetle if you go to your cooking area and you combine one water you, you you'll go to combine i can't do it here but um you'll just click on the water and you'll combine the water and this spice beetle and combine them you'll get a tea that will um give you your burnt some burnt stamina back 
that's the same with uh not that not that same combination but different combinations you'll be able to get your burnt health back burnt mana back stuff like that so play with play with everything and um learn the learn the recipes and to get all get everything back all right so now we're outside the front gate let's go as you can see there's gab berries oh right here let me show you so when you're running gab berries you can just eat some gab berries as you can see i got some, a stamina boost to get stamina back faster but also drink some water so now i'm getting stam two things of stamina back faster recover 0.3 stamina per second and recover 0.4 stamina per second so my stamina comes back much faster by having both of those actives now not everything stacks so you'll have to play with it and figure out stuff that's stacked together now sleeping if i was to sleep right here i put my bedroll out what's attacking me all right so i'm going to show you the dog again you can just strafe i got my backpack on let me get rid of my backpack drop my backpack so i move faster i roll faster all right so see i took some damage to get that damage back that health back i would have to sleep so i put my bed roll down i'm gonna hit f now for every hour that i sleep as you can see i'm outside so my guard my ambush percentage is going up i go to it's at 40 right now I go to two it's not going to go any higher okay some some places most places it will go much higher you even get to 100 percent so watch out for that now also to repair your equipment as you can see right here my knuckles over at the right side there right under knuckle where it says cloth knuckles the white bar it's slightly slightly depleted there's a little bit of red in that um so that means what you can do you can repair so to get health back one let's go ahead and do it i'm going to put one two points into sleep one point into repair to drop that ambush percentage i'll go ahead and put two points in so we only got an eight percent chance of being ambushed as you can see also we're getting closer to night too go ahead and confirm that with only an eight percent chance of being attacked we got attacked so let's go ahead and fight these bandits as you can see i knocked him down his white bar was depleted go ahead and keep keep on hitting him Boom, he's down. One more bandit. I'm not very good with these knuckles yet. All right, we bo beat both bandits. Let me go ahead and sleep again. Oh, right here, a negative effect is showing you that it wants you to put, it doesn't show up, but it wants you to, saying a bandage right there is gonna give you health back, so. It's one way to get health back. So let's try that again. We're going to sleep. We're going to sleep through the night really quick. Drop my... See if we get attacked again. All right. Fortunately, we did not get attacked this time. So as you can see, by sleeping too long, I became thirsty. I also became hungry but i got all my stamina back all my health back and all my stuff is restored repaired you only repair the stuff that is currently equipped anything in your satchel will not get repaired so always make sure and then always always remember to disassemble your 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 bed roll or your tent and that will put it back in your 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 backpack if you do not do it it will be left right there and you won't be able to use it again now i will go ahead and drink to get rid of my thirst let's go ahead and eat some stuff eat some bread no longer hungry still thirsty i'm having to drink a lot to get rid of that thirst there he goes thirst is gone all right where to get mana from 
As you can see in bottom left where you have stamina and health, there is no mana there. To get mana, that big mountain right there with the spiral going through it, around it, you have that is called the Conflux Mountain. It's right here. We are here. This is your city. We're standing right about here. And that's the mountain. So it's kind of east southeast ish. And look at that. Southeast. Compass at the very top. So you have to go into that mountain, talk to somebody, and that is how you get mana. It's not that easy though. There are three different paths to take. Each one is harder than another. Um, at the very bottom is one path, and that's the hard it's the shortest path, but it's also the hardest. At the in the middle is a medium path, and at the top, or closer to the top anyway, is going to be the longer, easier path. So basically that's how you do it. You go into there, talk to somebody. For every when it comes up, you'll you'll have to choose and and pick. Uh, basically, you'll, you'll, you'll go into option, you'll, you'll get, so if you want 20 mana, you'll have to sacrifice, at the same time, it's not one or the other, you sacrifice 5 health and stamina for every 20 mana you gain. So, be careful. Um, I would say if you're doing a basic thing, maybe to being a paladin, or you just want to cast some things, like boons, a lot of boons, like, uh, frost boon fire boon to give you resistances and stuff lightning boons those will cost mana eight i think it's eight mana a piece i would say anywhere between from 40 to 60 mana would be as good especially 40 mana 40 mana is probably fine um but don't go over 60 mana if now if you're gonna going to be a caster you definitely want to go much higher uh you'd probably want over 100 mana over 100 mana. I'm not sure how much. I've never played a man, uh, caster, but you definitely... Now, you can always go back. You don't have to do it all at once. You can grab a little bit now and then come back later. You can go back as many times as you want. So just always remember that. Also, night and day. As you can see, it's day. Um, at night, you at the bottom left would actually probably have a, a getting cold. With the gear I have on, you, I'd start probably getting cold. So night and day does have effects also. Um, in the winter, just because you just made um, your cold weather gear, your cold weather defense, if, if it's night and you're running around, you might still get cold, start getting cold, even though you were fine during the day because the sun's out. So always remember that. Um, here's a supply cache. Anytime you can go get uh, pressure, pr pressure, pressure plates. Pressure plates you cannot use right now. You have to get a skill to use those pressure plates. But there are trip wires. You can make trip wires. Um, you can, might have to find a skill for that because I do not believe you start with it. You do start with the spikes. With trip wires, when you make a trip wire, you have to put some kind of spikes in there. You can use wood and create wooden spikes, or you can start using iron and uh, make iron spikes, stuff like that. And but you, after you set down the spike, then you'll click on it again to put either a weapon. If you use a weapon or anything like that, it will use up the weapon. So always try to use spikes, but you will have to arm it with spikes. Spikes at the beginning of this game are your best friend. Use tons of spikes. You can place down as many spikes traps as you want, and you do not activate the spikes traps. So you pla place it down. You can run, or run through it back and forth. And then at any point, you run an enemy through there, get an enemy to chase you. You run through it. He hits, he hits it and gets damaged. Place down as many as you want. It makes it makes life so much easier. All right, when you first come out of here, right over here is your town. That's the wall to go back into town. As you can see, I stayed left. If you roam around out here, get used to the map area. Now, if you when you use your map, as you can see, you can't turn your map. You can't turn with it. You have a compass at the top of your screen. You have a compass and your map, you have to use it doesn't sh there's no way to you can place markers down but you can't name them or anything like that um right click you place a marker uh right click it again and goes away you can't name the marker or anything like that that i've found out um but there's no marker for you so you have to use the area that you're in so like our town is right over there so so we are, we came out here and we're up on the side. We're right about here. 
we're going over here. There's a cave over here. Not every, see, everything, so, there's a lot of things marked on the map. Not everything on the map is marked. So there's a cave right over here, obviously not marked. So that's where I'm about to take you. But explore this area. You'll find a lot of things. Caves that you that you might be able to do, might not be able to do. But use your markers to understand where to go. Like if I'm trying to go to the Conflux Mountain, you'll see that you need to go from here. You need to go a little bit south, a little bit east. So southeast. And right there, you see the mountain southeast. Bird, get away. Those white birds, if you kill them, there is a chance that it will drop what's called a pearl a pearl bird mask it's great it's lightweight and it gives you uh running speed it's only a like when i heard it's only a one percent chance to drop so good luck basically now remember we're going to this cave i told you about that is right about here so we left town we're staying along the left side this is a great, great place to start with. So we're going to go over here. And you can see the caves coming up. A little troglite cave or something like that. I don't remember. The blister burrow. And there's like what they call troglites or something like, like that in here. All right. So here's the cave. You got some, again, running up to this guy. You see it glowing. You got some stuff to get from him. You got an iron axe. So if you hit tab, you will compare what you currently have equipped and the iron axe here and what you currently have equipped. So the difference of the weight, the damage, the impact damage, attack speed, all differences. Durability, dry bar mushroom, ice rags. You can place ice rags on your, like, I'm going to replace it, use it and place it on my hands. You can see they glow. So I knew it will now do ice damage right there for every attack. I'm doing six ice damage and it has a cool effect. Now also just like the dogs, these trogites are really pretty easy. I'm going to hit them once, twice, maybe now. You can strafe. They do. They're so e they're so easy to fight. So this is a great, great place to come and learn. Um, search around this cave. There's many things to um, definitely bring a mining axe. There's a lot of stuff to get. You don't need the mining axe for the star mushrooms, but you want to get the star mushrooms. Everything you pick up, you can craft stuff from just about. So always, always remember and bring stuff with you. Now, I know this has been a long video, but the last thing I'm going to talk about is factions. The faction, you have to join one sooner or later to get further on to, into the game. And that's what uh, they start pushing you toward that. That's your main quest. That's basically your main quest. You have to join, end up joining a faction. There's four factions. I believe it's four factions. Yeah, four factions. So you can do most of the exploring of the game and never join in a faction. So always remember that. You don't have to rush and join a faction, but there's different, so many different factions to join. Um, and each faction, you can you can only join one faction. So always remember that. Um, you don't want to waste... Each faction has its benefits, ups and downs. You'll get different things from each faction. That's something you might want to look up. Um, but also, that's, what's, that's what's what a lot of fun of this game is. I didn't look up I first joined what's called the Holy Mission. Um, it, it's great. Um, you get different things from each faction. You know, so each faction doesn't give you the same stuff. They'll give you gear at the end, stuff like that. I'm not going to tell you what you'll get. You'll get passive skills, stuff like that. So it's up to you what kind of factions you joined. Um, one last thing to touch on. Dying. If you die in this cave, dying in this game is really unique. There's, you, of course, you'll wake up with less health and less stamina, so you'll have to get, get that back. But you'll also always wake up in different areas. Like, you might wake up in a cell, um, and you have to, you don't really have to break free, but you'll have to get your bag, go locate your bag, stuff like that. Now, now, if you're in the middle of a fight and you drop your bag like I just did, at the very top, look up on your compass. You run over here. Oh, no, where's my bag? It's not over there. Look on your compass. Look, oh, look, there's a, a bag marker. That is where your bag is. 
Now, mo even, even if you drop your bag and you die, wherever you wake up, usually your bag's gonna be around you. So wherever you wake up, look on your compass, see where your bag is. If it is not there, go to the area where you died at and you go like, if, if, you, if you go back into this cave, you died in this cave, you go back into the cave, it should show on the cave and it should be there. But most of the time, it will be where you woke up at from after dying. So don't be afraid to die, to freak out. Don't freak out if you die when you dropped your bag to roll faster and stuff like that. You will be able to get it back. Again, you just check your compass when you wake up or go back to the area where you died at and check your compass again. Let me do that. So, so while you're holding it, there's no, no kind of marker, no bag. Drop it. Run over here. Oh, look, there's no turn, turn, turn. There's my bag. You just run to the bag and pick it up. There you go. Hopefully this beginner guide covered everything that you need. All the questions you have. If I did not cover something you were looking for, please ask me in the comment section below. I will definitely respond to it. Um, give you all the information that I can. And also if it's if it's a big enough issue for a lot of people or I, if I think I can, I'll make a whole nother video on it. So um, thank you for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button and come back and see some more.